All right, so you may have recently heard about the KISS Ultrafly controller, and you may know it looks something like that, but when you go on sites like FPV, you don't really see anything that says KISS Ultra. You see KISS FCV2, and you're thinking, well, that kind of looks the same. Is that it? I don't really know. But you also heard about things like the G4. Is that it? That doesn't look the same. What's, what's G4 versus KISS Ultra? You know, it's... Uh, well, today we're going to try to work on cleaning up some of the KISS confusion. And we're also going to talk about some stuff that you should know before you consider buying into the KISS ecosystem. So KISS Ultra is a new flight controller that's out there. It is not the same as the KISS G4, it's not the same as the KISS V2, and it's not the same firmware. The V2 and the G4 that you can see down here, those work on the same firmware. Those are owned, I believe, by FetTech, uh, which used to be, I guess FetTech purchased it by Flyduino. Um, there was different developers at the time. And so that's kind of the classic KISS. And I did some videos on KISS comparing it to Betaflight defaults and Betaflight tuned versus KISS tuned. So both on defaults, both tuned and uh, found some surprising things. So, you know, the, the hype just, it doesn't really pan out. Um, it doesn't fly as good as Betaflight. That's all there is to it. It doesn't fly as good on defaults, doesn't fly as good even tuned. Which shouldn't be that surprising. There's more features in Betaflight to make it fly better. So when soft firmwares don't have some more advanced features, then it doesn't fly as good. But nevertheless, some people love KISS and that's kind of the classic KISS. Well, Alexander Fedorov, who was one of the developers or the developer for KISS, uh, kind of parted ways with FetTech. I guess they weren't interested in making firmware updates or, but there's firmware updates, but I, I don't know. He parted ways with FetTech. There is firmware updates, uh, like since I did the tests that I did on my KISS flight controller, there's been like four or five firmware updates, adding support, adding uh, Crossfire V3, adding all kinds of stuff to it. Uh, Ghost, things like that, Express LRS, other bug fixes, things of that nature. So the old KISS, I guess I would say, is does have advancements in the firmware for like modern protocols and bug fixes and DJI and, and HD zero support and things of that nature. But Alexander wanted to make his own flight controller kind of start fresh. And that is what the KISS Ultra is. Now there is only two websites in the world right now that sell the KISS Ultra flight controller. And I will drop those links down below. This is the main one. This is Alexander's store. And you can see that KISS Ultra is here. Now, from what I understand, talking with him recently, there's a new batch of 600 flight controllers coming in. Uh, that's why it says coming soon there. Uh, but they go pretty quick. Um, so you have to keep an eye out and look out. And the biggest thing is, you know, you cannot confuse them from any of the other flight controllers that you see that are KISS. So the biggest thing right now as of February 2022 is if you see a KISS flight controller that are not on the two links down below, this is one of them, it is not KISS Ultra. It may look the same, it's not KISS Ultra. KISS Ultra is only stored in two stores right now. Now what's even a little bit more tricky is if you go in and I, you know, I can't add one of those because it's not in stock, but if you go to do a checkout and then look at your country list, the United States isn't even on the list. So if you're from the United States, I don't think you can get a KISS Ultra uh, as of right this second on this store, at least, uh, to purchase it. Now, it does look like you can from the N Factory store. So if you go into there and you can see two shipping costs, uh, one is uh, $7.90. Uh, five euros. Uh, the other is uh, thirty dollars. So that's that's a, that's a little bit more. Uh, obviously, if you buy enough, uh, you can get some free shipping. Maybe I don't know if that goes out of state, but if you're in Germany, you can. So if you are in the United States, I would definitely check out the N Factory uh, site versus the other for now. So let's talk about some of the differences between Kiss Ultra and Classic Kiss or the the old Kiss, I guess you'd call it. So one of the main differences is the price. The KISS Ultra is coming in around 50 euros, which is about 56 US dollars. And then the KISS G4 is about 80 bucks. There's a lot of other differences as well. KISS Ultra comes feature rich. So you can see on here, it has a native OSD for the first time with KISS firmware. That means there's an OSD chip on the KISS Ultra flight control board. It has BL Heli pass-through in addition to being able to connect to KISS ESCs. That's huge. So you can use basically any ESC you want. KISS ESC, BL Heli, ESC, BL Heli 32, BL Heli S, whatever you want. 
There's eight motor outputs available on the KISS Ultra FC. So if you had an octocopter or a cine lifter, you could use a KISS. GPS return to home. That was only available in the old KISS firmware if you were a Patreon supporter of Alex, uh, but now it just comes with the KISS Ultra. There's a barometer on the KISS Ultra as well. The old KISS flight controllers are the new ones. The G4 don't have a barometer. In some countries like France, that's required. KISS has an H7 flight controller. Not that it's gonna need all those cycle powers, but it's definitely future proof for any running operations it needs to do. Uh, running at a one kilohertz PID loop rate, uh, they got plenty to spare. The G4, uh, it's even more than the G4. I don't mean an H7 up to 400. Uh, megahertz with a G4 is 170. The KISS Ultra uses an online configurator, so all you have to do is use your Chrome browser and go to kiss-ultra.com, and that will take you there, and then you should be able to connect. You have to have a KISS flight controller to do it, but you'd hit web connect, and then it would show up here, and you hit connect, and that would kick connect to your flight controller. If you don't want to do that, you can download the GUI. I will drop this link down below, and you can just download it. You can see there's a 32-bit Windows, Linux, all kinds of versions here. You can download it, just unzip it, and then you can just you have it uh you know an offline uh configurator obviously you'd have to keep on abreast of this for any updates where the online configurator just gets updated automatically so finally the last two is additional uarts seven instead of five and then fl improved flight performance now i have not verified that the flu flight performance is true but i have talked with alex you know i've talked to him about the old kiss flight performance problems with throbbles um and it does uh, some overshooting and eye term accumulation um, I think those were the two major things. I'll drop a card in the upper right where you can check out my video where I did a beta flight versus KISS, the old KISS, uh, tuned, and I tuned them both the best of my ability and still showed some of the, just what you run up against uh, with the old KISS firmware. Now the new firmware, Alex said he's worked on those, but I personally want to verify it because I've, I've heard this before, you know, the old KISS from, you know, that ecosystem was perfect before until you look at it and then you find it's not perfect. Now all of a sudden the new one's perfect, which, you know, in engineering it's trust but verify. So I trust they are improved, but I'd like to verify it myself to see uh, to the extent of that improvement and uh, just to make sure. Some of the things that are the same, they both use an MPU 6000 gyro, have DJI support and all the latest protocol support as I talked about before. Now I do have to say the OSD that Alex came up with is really good. I do not love the Betaflight OSD, but I don't love it enough or care enough to actually you know, go to modify it myself and I don't think other people do as well, but it only takes one person. If you look at their OSD, just the way it's organized, same as Flight One, I think the organization of the OSDs are a little bit simpler and which is nice. Uh, it's a nice, simple OSD setup and you can do more. You can move the OSD elements around in the OSD. Uh, you can turn on and turn off elements. You can change your motor mapping. Not, I don't know that you want to need to do that all that much in the field, but you can. And uh, right there, it shows that you can do that. You can edit your TBS crossfire settings. Um, now it's just crossfire as far as I'm aware. It's not like ghost or any of those other things. Uh, but you, know, you can see if you're in the crossfire uh, ecosystem or the uh, TBS ecosystem for Tracer here, uh, you can make those adjustments. You can also adjust your video sync. If you have any like uh, flickering of the OSD, you can adjust your syncing there. Uh, you can take a look at your channels as well uh, on here as, as you see that GPS testing, all kinds of different features right within the OSD. And when you're doing these tweaks in the OSD, you can see up here, this is the actual configurator. So you can kind of see it on the screen, but also just see it right in the configurator, which is much like flight one. That's how that works. I mean, you're just editing it all in the configurator. So I will drop a link to this video down below and you can definitely check that out as well. So that's comparing it to the KISS G4, the old KISS versus the new KISS. But how does it compare when we just look at it versus a Betaflight flight controller and some of the feature sets and options that you have in Betaflight versus KISS Ultra? So just picking out a flight controller, I picked out a Kakute H7. It's also an H7, figured that was a good comparison. You can see there's definitely a price difference between the two. The Kakuta H7 is gonna run you about 75 bucks delivered. The Kiss Ultra is gonna run you about $64. Now, difference in shipping is gonna be immense in time. Uh, the Kiss Ultra uh, receiving it from overseas in the United States is going to take a couple weeks, two, three weeks, I would guess, uh, where the beta flight flight controller from your local retailers within the United States will probably be around, I don't know, a week, three, three to 
three to five days, something like that. Usually if you order stuff on and have your order in by Monday, you'll have it by Friday. In addition to that, you can see with just looking at the Kakute H7, you also get Bluetooth configuration support. So that would be through the Speedy app. You're going to get onboard black box logging. Kiss Ultra does support black box logging, but you would need an external. The open lagger is what you want to get. Now, even with that, it's somewhat Probably it, it works okay. I, I put the issues on Alex's radar. I'm not really sure if they're fixed yet or not. But the logging rate, you have to run it at a slower logging rate. Um, even so, it's 800 hertz uh, logging rate, which is really not ideal for any noise analysis. And the black box traces for how it converts the rates to the actual commands that it's giving uh, in logging. So it's the thing that you're, you'd be looking to see how well it's tracking on that uh, was kind of messed up before. So again, I don't know if that's fixed yet or not. And again, with normal Betaflight flight controllers, they usually have some sort of onboard flash and you just clear the flash and the next time you arm, it logs. It's, that's a, it's just that simple. In this one, you get six UARTs versus seven, but you do get nine motor outputs versus eight. There is also a nine volt uh, 1.5 amp uh, rail for powering the DJI unit. And on the five volt rail, it's a two amp regulator. Yes, I am going to say that Betaflight flight controllers uh, fly better because I've not seen anything when you actually vet it and look at it like I did with KISS before and Flight 1. You know, you hear all this stuff that, oh, this flies so much better. But when you actually scientifically look at the stuff, it's all hype and not true. I can be proven wrong on that, but somebody needs to do it from an engineering standpoint, not just a, hey, I, it's my opinion. That's not that's not that's there's a lot of people that have the opinion that the earth is flat and guess what they're wrong so opinions don't really matter uh in my world and finally just beta flight reliability and what i mean by that is just the project uh any open source project like beta flight the size of beta flight you are not talking about one developer that you know may stop developing tomorrow you're talking about a team of people even if those entire team quits another team comes in and or forks the project and it keeps going it's never going to die as long as uh, people are flying uh, quadcopters so there's a reliability to that a consistency to that that uh, you get with Betaflight flight controllers or any open source flight controllers but that is all well and good but what is the number one bit difference between the two right now that's right you can get these H7 boards, Betaflight flight control boards, and they're in stock. And even if the K2K H7 is not in stock, you can get another one that's in stock by another manufacturer It's H7. iFlight make H7 boards that are Betaflight. They're all local. They're widespread. Where the KISS Ultra V2 may be in stock, may be out of stock. I know Flight 1 has been waiting for, what, a year and a half now for socks to be replenished. Um, I don't think that's going to be the case with Alex. He's not a... Uh, uh, guy like that uh, like the flight one but um yeah you just you know i'm sure it's going to go through the batches quick i think alec believes his 600 batch is going to sell just like that so then we'll be out of stock again um so that's it's kind of a pain uh where I, yeah it's just you know beta flight stuff you don't have to deal with that Finally, with uh, KISS, I just don't think that the concept of keep it simple really applies anymore. Um, I think that was kind of a jab at Betaflight or open source a while ago, and I just, it doesn't really apply. It's just about, it's the same to set up. You still gotta plug stuff in the UARTs, tell what UARTs have what things on, and you're gonna load presets. And with Betaflight uh, 4.3, now more than ever, you're just you know same thing you gotta you know set up your ports um set up a couple basic things you have to do the same between kiss and beta flight and with beta flight now you just go into here and load your presets uh, based on whatever you want it to be some of the motor uh complications that you beta flight used to have with uh, motor remapping and then motor change in direction um well beta flight now has a motor remapping tool as soon as beta flight 4.3 comes out and save a release that everybody will be able to use and then even with this um with kiss now you have to do the bail heli pass through to change motor direction where in beta flight now you can just do it right in the configurator you don't have to deal with bl heli so in that sense beta flight simpler so what's my take on it if you are interested in the kiss ecosystem and want to check out kiss i would definitely check out the kiss ultra versus the older kiss uh the kiss g4 or kiss v2 kiss ultra has a plethora of new features and lower a little bit lower cost especially if you're you know a little closer for that shipping there is a culture in kiss that it's like this exclusive cooler thing to run 
but it, it doesn't fly as well. And uh, KISS people will probably take exception to that. Part of the chosen handful of John Connors who know the truth, even if it requires that basic logic and the laws of physics be rewritten. I should probably temper that a little bit by saying that Alex never claimed that KISS flies better than Beta Flight. He's just doing his thing. It's just, you get uh, folks that get onto this stuff that become evangelists, big, big product supporters, really buy into the product. You know, if I can get my hand on a KISS Ultra Flight Controller, uh, we'll vet that out, see if I'm wrong. People said I was wrong before about Flight 1 and about KISS before, and I wasn't. And uh, so, yeah, i just been doing this for a while and with experience, uh, I wouldn't uh, put any bets against something flying better than Beta Flight. That's why I fly Beta Flight. That's why most people fly Beta Flight, because it flies the best. But what do you think? Drop your comments down below. I'll make a video card at the end of this that you can check out if you want to look into more of what all the little knicky knack things are in the KISS configurator. Thanks everybody. I hope this helps.